Hey guys, this is Mike coming at you today from Player One Video Games with a new episode of Storytime with Mike. Today we are focusing on the Sega Saturn. The Saturn! What happened? How was it? Did I love it? Did I hate it? Did everybody love it? What was it like when it came out? I'm giving you the feeling of here of being back in time in 1994. That's what my goal is, uh, is to tell you what I felt, what my buddies were feeling maybe, Castro a little bit, maybe what you felt. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's get into it. All right, how did I hear about the Sega Saturn? I really don't remember like the first time I heard of it because of this Sega CD 32X, all that stuff going on. You're like, you knew the Saturn was coming up probably just saw it in a video game magazine, you know, mm -hmm. Sega Saturn's coming like, out. Like, uh, what was it? Where there would be like a little feature of, hey, in Japan. Yes, that's <laughs> where you always first saw, because, you know, everything came out earlier in Japan. So this system, uh, let's just say it was kind of like Pearl Harbor. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> Sega did a sneak attack on American soil <laughs> back it was supposed to come out in sometime right around the same time as the PlayStation, whatever that was, November of 95, right? Mm -hmm. Or September, November, I can't remember. So that's what everybody was waiting on, all right? We were waiting on those two to, to hit. Well, Sega, this is how I saw it. It was May of 1995, and back then I worked four tens. I worked Monday through Friday, 10 hours a day. And Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I was off. But every Friday, I would hit every game store that was around here um, in the in this area. And so the, the first one I usually would hit was in the mall at Babbage's. So I walked into the mall, and I see this box right here sitting up on the counter with a price tag on it. Exactly the same price as we have here for $3.99, right? And I asked the kid behind the counter, I said, what? Is this for sale already? He went. <laughs> and you know what I said? I'll take it. I said, I couldn't believe it. I was shocked. I said, did y'all know it was coming out? Nobody in the world knew. Nobody in America knew that it was coming out no. five months early, right? Nobody did. No, we didn't have access to the trade shows and stuff like, like we do now. Right. You had to be part of you know a, a company or whatever to go to e3 back then and see stuff so we were just you know only magazines is what we what we could go by and uh so when i walked in i saw it i, I was just floored i said it's, i couldn't believe it was for sale couldn't believe it was here i was happy confused excited just ah. so i said i'll buy it and the and they had a few games at launch i think panzer dragoon was one of them i didn't buy that one at launch but I loved Daytona USA in the arcade, so it was a launch title, and I bought Clockwork Knight. All right, um, those are the two I bought, and then right after that, I think I, I bought Panzer Dragon, maybe a couple, my next paycheck. Mm -hmm. So I hooked it up, I took it home. I was I was very happy, I was very excited, and when I played Daytona, now I played it at the arcade a ton. I thought. Okay. Oh, arcade mode. Hey. Yeah, I thought, wow, you know, this game, it it's a, a little little tough on the eyes. It didn't bother me, really. I thought it's not bad. But what I really was impressed by, it plays just like the arcade. The, the, the gameplay is just like the arcade. Very, very similar. And it's very precise. You know, you've got to get down to a tenth of a... You can beat your always beat your time by a hundredth of a second or a tenth of a second, you know. And, and I played this game over and over and over. It's still one of my favorite Saturn games because of the, because of the crazy precision of it. If you've never played this game, it is so precise. Like you, you can literally squeeze a tenth of a second or a hundredth of a second off of your time if, if you know okay, on, on this spot, you know. So that, that's what I liked about this game. The gameplay was very good the graphics were good enough i mm -hmm. said you know what for it's not it's close enough to the arcade it's not close but it's close enough to where 
I feel like I'm playing the arcade, but the gameplay was perfect. I loved it. Really did. So it was off to a great start. To you're, getting, you're getting that 3D that you always uh, wanted. Okay, yeah. Kind I was, of. I was <laughs> we'll getting, get there. I was getting the 3D. I was getting a real car racing game. You know, a real car racing game. Now, I love Need for Speed on the 3DO. Loved it. And I was playing my 3DO at the time. Um, but this one was a true racing game. You know, where you use time and you're racing other people and, you know, other cars. Where Need for Speed was more driver experience a little mm -hmm. bit. You know, but I loved both of them. So, I was happy. Off to a great start. I played Clockwork Night. And it was so-so to me at the time, you know. Because it was, it was a flat 2D uh, kind of slow-paced game, you know. Um, so, you know, I wasn't overly impressed. But it doesn't, didn't matter. Because I was playing Daytona. And we didn't know at the time that this was only supposed to be a 2D console. Okay, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. But you're right. They, what I read something real quick. Since, let's just talk about that. Sorry, I'm just, I'm, uh, I know, I, I, I'm always rushing. We'll, we'll talk about that here in a minute. So, I bought um, a Panzer Dragoon, right? Uh, we don't have the first one here, we do have the second one. But they play very, very similar uh, in... And then Bug came out right after. And when Bug came out, I was, I was, because Bug is a pseudo isometric kind of 3D. Let's pop it in here. I love this Daytona in there though. Um, let's um, go ahead and we'll put in Bug in. I think Bug will kind of, everybody loved uh, Panzer, Panzer Dragoon, right? Everybody loved it, all the reviewers. I, did I love it? I liked it a lot. Like I said, it was a rail shooter, and I wanted at that time, I liked rail shooters, but I wanted to go 3D everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it was, and it was on rails, and it was okay. Bug, I liked Bug, all right? But what Bug did, it gave me a little bit of anxiety because I thought, um, I thought, well, why can't they make this 3D? Like, I want to go everywhere, you know, like... Um, like Banjo Kazooie or something like that, right? And so I said, well, it's a launch title. It's kind of a launch title, and that's probably why Clockwork Night is, Night is 2D. Now Daytona was impressive, you know, but it's yeah. it's on a track. It's not exactly 3D everywhere, but I loved it. So I've just kept on playing Daytona, right? Um, we'll get this going here in a minute. We'll let that start up. So. They, you know, surprise. We got a surprise launch, of course, and but it wasn't that far off that um, the PlayStation was coming out. You know, May, mm -hmm. June, July, August, September. When did it come out? September or November? Maybe four to six months later. It was like November. It was November. I think it was okay. November. Yes. So six months later, we, so Saturn had a six-month head start, right? And I was I was really liking my Saturn. I was playing the Daytona. Uh, and, and, and clockwork, like I said, and bug. I was, and I bought Panzer Dragoon, but I was still like, okay, you know, I, I was a little, my, I was a little nervous for Sega, just a little bit, because I was wanting still powerful 3D to come out, and um, like things like that was coming out on PlayStation One, like Warhawk or Dis or, or Destruction Derby stuff like that, or Wipeout. Well, Wipeout's not exactly 3D, but I was wanting something like that, and but I said, okay, you know, I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy. So, um, PlayStation comes out, and it just comes in like a freight train. Which we will get to on the next video. Yes, but I still have to mention that, because this was <laughs> battling the PlayStation. By then, you know, a year goes, year, year and a half has gone by. When the PlayStation 1 comes out, I knew that three, my 3DO was dying. I feel like this is kind of like how Sega jumped the gun on the Genesis just to get the edge on Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah, I, I believe so. I think what you were pointing at was that this, is, this thing's a 2D monster, right? It can do 2D great. And that that's where I'm heading. Um, let's uh, uh, So about a year goes by. I'm still playing my Saturn, you know, some of the, uh, a few other games that's c that come out. I think I've got, I picked up NBA Jam Tournament Edition, something like that. Um, I wasn't buying too much, though. Once the PlayStation 1 came out, I was buying stuff for my PlayStation. 
right? Mm -hmm. And I was even picking up a game or two from my 3DO. So, um, Tomb, Tomb Raider comes out, okay? Oh, let's look at this bug real quick. So, this is what I'm talking about, you know, so, oh, well, I should have just kept it on that. That's fine. Um, but, I'll, but, the, but the bug was not a true 3D game. It was more of a... Um, 2.5? 2.5, yeah. So that's what I was feeling a lot of was the Saturn was 2.5, you know, not, not 3D. It's like he's scaling. It's, yes, it's all scaling. Yeah. It's not true 3D. Like, I feel like the uh, 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 Super Nintendo with an FX chip could do this, you know, somewhat. Oh, but it sure. was still a, was kind of a fun game, right? I liked Bug, and Bug 2 came out, and Clockwork Knight. They were fun games, but they were weren't what I was wanting. This is almost yeah, like, and we're, and we're jumping into the future here, this is almost like uh, Toad Treasure Tracker. Something like that. Wow. Okay, so let's let's talk about what's going on now with the Saturn. So... You're talking about Tomb Raider. We're talking about Tomb Raider. Uh, and what, what, uh, uh, oh, what do you got there, Mike? Tomb Raider. So... This came out at the exact same time as the PlayStation 1 Tomb Raider. Mm -hmm. so, Dearly beloved. And when Tomb Raider came out, I was, the first time I played it was on the PlayStation 1, okay? First time I played it was on the PlayStation 1. The, what was it? The fastest 3D action ever seen. What? Fastest, right? <laughs> so, let's, let me just hold Tomb Raider here for a second, because to me personally, and I'm sure for a lot of people, when Tomb Raider came out, um, it won't be an original. All right, sorry about that. We're back. Little little hiccup there, real quick. So we're talking about Tomb Raider. Um, the, what happened, I played Tomb Raider for, it was in a, it was in a store when Tomb Raider first came out. And that, when this game came out, it was just like, wow, this game is revolutionary. Mm -hmm. uh, I was playing it on the PS1. So I went and I bought it on the Saturn. And I took it home and I went, this, what's going on here? I said, this does not look like the PS1. Now, the, even the PS1 version, it was a little hard on the eyes. Just right. a little bit. It was, but and it when was... When you were inside of a cave and you saw all the grayness, it was it was a little difficult. Um, this one made it a little unbearable. And when I said, this, the PlayStation 1 kills this one in 3D. Here, show us. You know what I remember? I think there was a. There, you have to uh, go through a oh, training. Oh well, no, nah, we don't have time for that. But let's just let it. Ain't nobody got time for that. We don't got time for. I might short. I might do a side by side. Hold on, let me give you a little window there and. Maybe so. Right there. Give me a window side by side. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. All right. All right. Back on it. So, <laughs> and then so I said, man. So I went and actually rented the PS1 version, and I saw so I could compare it, and I thought, my God. That's not the one this one Saturn is going to not make it. Mm -mm. My instant thought, I said, this Saturn has no chance now. Because everything, everything was moving to 3D at that time. Mm -hmm. Everybody was wanting 3D. Everybody was, it was moving to 3D. Everybody was, nobody was wanting 2.5. Right. And when the PlayStation 1 came out, that showed, hey, yes, 3D can be done at home without a massive computer. And so, this was at the time, guys. Don't forget this. We're talking about at the time. We were sick of 2D games because that's yeah. all you had. I was sick of Streets of Rage, Golden Axe. I didn't want to play that anymore. I wanted 3D in your face. All right. Stop making this game. So I knew the Saturn was dead. Even after, how can I say that after one game? I just the bug, the clockwork, what they were focusing on, the, the preemptive strike on America with the early launch, you know, they were trying to get a mm -hmm. game because I read, uh, I read in a book that when 
the developers were creating the Saturn. Um, oh yeah. When the developers were creating the Saturn, they wanted they were making it the most powerful, <laughs> like you said, 2D system ever. And PlayStation wasn't making it the most powerful 3D system ever. So the the head of Sega said we climbed up the, and hit the peak of the 2D mountain. And, but everybody was wanting to go to the top of the 3D mountain. We went up the wrong mountain. Mm -hmm. But guess what? I still held on to my Saturn. I didn't get rid of it. Why? Because one day when I walked into Electronic Boutique in Baybrook Mall, which I always was there, when I walked into Electronic Boutique, they had import Saturn games. So I said, Excuse me, sir, how do I play these import Saturn games? Is it playable on my American system? He said, yeah, just grab one of these game sharks, pop it in to your system. And there were ones that they saw had like four megabytes of memory, I believe. And it also made games less load time, like the 2D games and stuff. So I popped this in. Uh-oh, is our stall not working? Oh no. Well, this was a biggie. Hit pause real quick, guys. Hold on. Wah, wah. Sorry guys, we could not get a stall to work. We tried to do a quick buff on it, but what I was getting at was that uh, Sega Saturn was climbed up the 2D, 2D hill uh, and, and became a 2D monster, but, excuse me, at the time, nobody wanted that. No. But, but, I held on to mine. Japan, though, in Japan it was a big hit, the Saturn, because of two reasons. They played lots of shmups over there, more than we did, and they played a lot of 2D fighting games still. And even 2D fighting games, I didn't, I didn't exactly want to play any more Street Fighter. But when X-Men Children of the Atom came out, even though it does play similar to Street Fighter, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I wanted so bad to play as X-Men characters or Marvel characters or DC characters. I didn't care if it played 2D or not. This game to me brought it like, saved the Saturn somewhat and then uh, when I walked in uh, let me go back when I walked into that's I think where we left off I walked mm -hmm. into EB and I saw these imports and they said you can pop in a game shark and play imports and the first one I bought they had metal slug right Ooh. and they had uh, they had metal slug I bought they had a ray uh, it might have been a Gundam game, I can't remember. And then another one that I bought was like an X-Men versus Street Fighter mm -hmm. one. And when I had this with the four megabyte cartridge, it loaded up so fast. I was like, wow, this is so great. Um, and this game, blew, this game, uh, X-Men, Children of the Atom blew me away. Because it was very, very, very close to the arcade. Mm -hmm. Metal Slug was the arcade perfect, you know. It just was so... Look at that. It was so good. Responsive? And, yeah, and so I kept my Saturn for another two years, and then the Capcom Generations came out, one through five. Mm -hmm. I think those were Japanese only. Mm -hmm. And I imported all of those. And so I was playing way more imports on my Saturn um, than anything else. Now, there was like, I think I got, was Radiant Silver Gun on here? Yes. Uh, so there was Radiant Silver Gun. Uh, was another one I believe so it, so look at how that's not that's just hooked up within a regular RF right um, this is oh this is done through or is it S video this is AV AV so it's just regular AV AV and that it looks very very that looks good. really good so <clears throat> that's why it made it in Japan well I'm just looking about how well it's playing because we're talking about the PS1 and how they were competing with each other. Have you ever played this game on the PS1, Mike? Lots of load times in between rounds, if I remember right. Is that right? And it is absolute crap. Yeah. This, though, man, this looks... So if you were into 2D fighters, if you were into shmups, uh, uh, RPG started coming out on it, too. This system was great. So I never got rid of my, my Saturn. I kept it, even though it was my secondary system of choice. I uh, always bought stuff on the PlayStation 1 and maybe once a month or a couple once every couple months I'd buy an import for the Saturn or something like that. Um, so yeah, it was I loved Sega still, but you knew it was 
the beginning of the end kind of mm -hmm. for them because this was the third uh, failure in a row. Sega yeah. CD, 32X, the Saturn. And to me, it was a failure uh, um, market-wise, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, in corporate world, I guess you'd consider it a failure. But personally, it wasn't. Um, I think because when Knights came out with the analog controller, Something similar to this, we but black. Nice here, yeah. This is this is a uh, Japanese version, but imagine black. Okay. Yeah, ours is black. I think everybody knows that one. Okay. So when Knights came out, I, I was really really amazed by it, and it was a you know you could oh, it, you can go everywhere 3D. Um, it was a little bit limited, but it showed you the power of the Saturn if you knew how to program for it. Mm -hmm. And what's his face who programmed for it? Uh, the, that was their best programmer who made Knights. So, if people took, if the programmers took a little bit more time with the games, I think, because it showed you, you know, and Daytona showed you, Knights showed you, um, that it could handle 3D, just like if, if people programmed, they had better programs for the Jaguar, it probably would have been okay. Mm -hmm. But this one, I think, could have competed against the uh, PlayStation 1 better if they had programmers more like, uh, I can't remember his name, the Knights guy, whoever programmed for that. Um, so for me though, it, you know, I, I, w I had a bad, I had a sad feeling when I played Tomb Raider. I said, this, I, I, I felt bad, I felt sad, I, but it really was a surprise when I could play imports on it. I, it, it like opened up a whole new world for me that I couldn't have access to. And thank God, it, I was shocked that EB in the mall here, EB Games imported Japanese games. Mm -hmm. it, just, it, it just blew my mind because, you know, back then it was still pre-internet for the most part. Uh, and to have that feat, to have that access was just, um, was, I loved it. It was amazing. It was, I felt like, you know, you, you, you always say back in the eighties and early nineties, uh, J Japan might as well have been Mars. Mm -hmm. This brought me closer to Mars, you know, like when they did that with this with this cartridge, and I could play the import. So the Saturn brought you closer to Mars. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. The Saturn brought me closer to Mars. <laughs> so I like saying that I love the Saturn uh, to this day. I still I probably I don't play it as much as my PlayStation. Uh, I didn't even show Guardian Heroes, the most unique uh, side-scrolling fighter ever. Should I pop it in there real quick? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, I didn't let's, even... Let's do it. Everybody knows about X-Men. Everybody knows about X-Men. This one, not everybody knows about, but Guardian Heroes, when I... And you know what's funny? I did not play Guardian Heroes until I opened the shop. That was 13 years ago yes. at time of recording. Yes, until <laughs> I opened the shop. So, uh, fully on me for not looking at that game when it came out. Um, but by then, you know, a lot of games came out in 98 for it. And by 98, I was playing actually probably more import stuff than, um, than American stuff. But this one right here is, it has a different kind of, uh, depth to it, to the, to the level. We'll do it real quick. I know, um, and I haven't played this one myself in a while. If I'm if I break out the Saturn, I'm playing probably Knights. I'm playing Tomb Raider. No, <laughs> I'm playing Daytona. <laughs> I'm playing Panzer, Sonic Jam, or, or 3D Blast. Um, but nowadays, you know, with with the revival of 2D and the appreciation for 2D now. Right. Yes. To me, if the best 2D gaming system now the the purest is the Saturn. Mm -hmm. A stall. I, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I wish this thing was working. We'll, we'll, we'll have to buff it. We'll have we'll have it in. We'll have a picture of it going. A stall. I didn't know about till we opened the shop. Right. I mean that, that one. Was... That one blew me away. But look, look at look, look at the well, look at the depth on this game right here. It's going to take a minute here. I'll turn. I'll crank it. But that game, you know, like... Look at that, I, he's in the background? Like, 
this game, did you see how he's going back and forth this way and that way? Look at that. That's that's some Neo Geo type stuff. That's it, exactly right. It's it, it, it did remind me. It is like Neo Geo. Uh, even though to me, the pinnacle of 2D gaming is Neo Geo. The pinnacle of 2D playing is is this one for the fighters, shmups, guardian heroes. The the uniqueness of it, you know. But it's it's. It's a wonderful system, and you know, if, if you don't own one of these, I, I'd say definitely buy one. Um, hey, guess where you can buy one at? Where can you buy one at, Mike? Right, cheer at Player One Video Games. We have box ones in stock. We have loose ones. We have tons of games for it. I didn't even get up from my chair because this thing is so much fun. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Not today. So, all right, guys. Hey, what you? I always ask you at the end, what's your experience on the Saturn? Didn't like it. Okay. <laughs> Didn't like and it. here's the reason why so i was like mike back in the day i wanted 3d i saw panzer dragoon and thought this is the ugliest 3d i have ever seen so for you panzer dragoon did it yeah it, it yes some people love panzer dragoon i don't i was too busy looking at how well the super nintendo could pull off yeah. Donkey Kong Country, to be honest with you. Okay, yeah. See how it has three different levels there? Isn't that crazy? But. Okay, go ahead. We'll get to it on the next episode. Yes. The system that I just went crazy for. All right. That on the next episode, guys. All right. Saying all that, hey, come on down. Check all this Saturn stuff out. Hopefully you like this video. Comment. And say how crappy it was, if it was. Yeah, tell us how bad we are. How bad we are, if you, if you want to. I don't care. Uh, it'll be a great time. <laughs>